Hi guys. My name's Shook. Um, yeah. After tonight, um, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. But if you don't know who I am, my name's Shook. I make videos for MBA. I also do other content in my Discord. Um, <clears throat> all these videos get posted on this subreddit right here called DF Sports. I make updates with all of the news that comes out, what that affects. You can talk strategy here with other people, ask questions. I'll always respond to you, stuff like, like that. If that's something you're interested in, definitely check that out. Also, if you ever need to get um, a hold of me, you can do so on Twitter right here at Tori Langley1992. And, I mean, I mean, I... By the way, Discord link will be down below, um, where I have in-depth content going over each slate, player pulls for cash, GPPs, cores for cash, GPPs. I also cover the XFL as well in my Discord, where I also have all those stuff, um, you know, write-ups about each player, my notes, stuff like that, cores for cash, stuff like that. Um, so if you want more football in your life, that will be down below in the Discord as well. We also have people that play PGA, NASCAR. Um, I might be doing NASCAR stuff, but... I don't know if I'm confident yet, confident in myself yet, putting other people's money on the line doing that. But we do have a lot of sharp people that play NASCAR, PGA, stuff like that. Um, we'll see. We also got MLB coming up. A lot of people playing MLB in there too. So, <clears throat> But what I cover, I cover XFL. I cover NBA. I cover NFL. When that's going on, I cover NBA Summer League. That'll be coming up in a few months. Um, what else do I, if you want, CSGO esports stuff I can do that as well I don't know if the demands there but you get the point I, I, I do a bunch of different stuff so discord link will be down below in the comments and I I, I don't know where to begin let's start with the main slate Fast forward, guys, if you don't want to hear this, just fast right on forward. Please fast forward if you don't want to hear this. Rui Hashimura. I have Steph Curry in my lineup. The big thing that I hammered home today in Discord was... I like the Clippers guys. I thought they were going a bit over owned though. So, what did I say? I said, if you are playing Kawhi Leonard, you need to be playing Steph Curry in your lineup. So, I have Steph Curry. I have Kawhi Leonard. I have Wenyan Gabriel. And then the Lakers, they put out a fucking lineup of, I don't know, Vandy at the five and Rui starting. No Gabriel. So, I'm, I'm like, oh, fuck. Now I gotta move things around. So that got me on to Kevin Porter Jr. and Rui Hashimura. And I forget what else. I believe it was uh Keldon. I'm 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 not entirely sure, I don't remember. But got off Steph, got off Gabriel, um, and then got on to Rui. And gets benched. Plays 17 minutes. When Ian Gabriel starts the second half for Rui Hashimura, plays 17 total minutes, less than a season average, with everyone out for the team. Five points, one turnover, one block, seven fantasy points. Mr. D'Angelo Russell with the team to himself in one of the best matchups in the league for point guards. 5 of 17 shooting, 3 of 11 from 3, 18 points, 30 fantasy points. The last time it was Fred Van Fleet. In a fun, I don't know if it was Fred. It was, it was someone. I, I've never seen a point guard bust against Houston or the Lakers. We have our first casualty today with D'Angelo Russell. Mr. Keldon Johnson. Finally, I'm getting the good Keldon game. Finally, I'm getting it. 
Finally. Finally. Goes into overtime. I'm like, yes. Maybe I'll be able to cash with Rui. Fouls out in overtime. Massive foul trouble. Fouls out. Zero fantasy points in overtime. Sandro Mukulishvili starts the game 0 of 8. Luckily, he did well. But that's all the tilting for the... Wait until you see my showdown lineup. Just wait. Just, you thought it couldn't get any worse than this? Just fucking wait. Just wait. The core that I had for today was... Josh Green, smash. Jaden Hardy, smash. Sandro, smash. D'Lo, bust. And then once again, the process that I told everyone was play Steph with Kawhi. Unfortunately, my fucking dumbass, once Gabriel wasn't starting, got off Steph. I, I should have just got off, like, one of these other plays to fit Steph in, but uh, I made a mistake. But I easily, easily cash if Rui just has a normal game, like a 20 fantasy points. Where does that put me? 96, 296? Let's just say it gets 20. Yeah, we're easily cashing. Just unbelievable. Also, Kevin Porter Jr. injured. <laughs> um, still played big minutes. It was at the end of the second half, but he was bloody. Just bloody. I All I ask is for one slate, guys. No injuries. We had an injury in my lineup tonight. No random benchings. No ejections. You got... I was so tilted from Rui Hashimura getting benched. I tilt entered the showdown slate and I put like $400 into showdown cash games. As you can see, it's a double up. Easiest money of my life. This was the easiest lineup to build. It, it was free money. It was literally free money. And I bubble everything because Marcus Morris ejected in the second quarter. Ejected. So what? Yesterday we had an injury. Two days ago we had two injuries in my lineup. Four days ago we had two injuries in my lineup with Ingram. I forget who else it was. The slate before the Ingram slate where I had two injuries. We had, um, I believe it was an ejection. I'm not entirely sure. But Marcus Morris just became my most hated player in the NBA. You, you could think. Think to yourself, no one could possibly run as worse as me. It's a proven fact now. I, it's a proven fact. It's absolutely proven. It's foolproof. It's a foolproof strategy. One slate. As you can see, my crowns are gone. I just I just tilt entered like seven, like, I don't know, four to five hundred dollars worth of entries for tomorrow. Balance going down because of injuries and ejection. I just don't know what to do with myself. Hopefully. Hopefully, we get a good slate tomorrow, which I do kind of like this slate. It's a nice five-game slate. Five-game slates are probably... I like five-game slates, six-game slates, stuff like that. I would be satisfied if I lost money with no injuries, no ejections, no benching. Because then I just made a bad lineup. Um, but if I lose with, like... I can't stand it. I, I can't stand it. Um, but now, after tonight, you guys just see the proof. You see the proof that absolutely no one in the history of the world can possibly deal with this much variance than I do um, with one lineup while playing one lineup. All right, let's go over the slate. Denver at Detroit. So it's a phenomenal match here. Um, my only worry here is risk of a blowout. Detroit is just God, God awful. They are horrible. Um, so the only risk here is a blowout. So if you think this game stays close, I think Jokic is going to smash. Um, I really do. He's had a you know letdown game, letdown game, letdown letdown game, two smash games. So um, might keep the ownership a little bit in check. But I mean, if this game stays close, I just think the ceiling is absolutely tremendous here. So I, I don't want to have to go over a breakdown on why I think Jokic is a great play. Um, Jamal Murray at seven seven still seems priced about right, um, but he has a bunch of upside as well. He'll play big minutes as long as this game stays close too. He is probable, so don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, I like both the top two guys here for Denver if you think this game stays close. Gordon, MPJ, when this team's healthy, they're more just secondary plays for me. It's really hard to go to either of them, even though MPJ has been playing a bit better of late. But they seem priced or a little bit overpriced with everyone healthy. KCP, you know, he'll stand in the corner, has to hit shots to reach value. 
Um, I think 4-8 is a bit overpriced. Might be, yeah, definitely overpriced. Bruce Brown will play mid-20s minutes off the bench. Once again, I think 4-6 might be a little bit pricey for me, but a fine value if you need it. There's not a lot of value on this slate. I'm not going to go to Reggie. I'm not going to go to Thomas Bryant. Um, those guys are just like 150 lineup dart throws, so not going to get into my player pool, unfortunately. All right, on to Detroit. So we have Jaden Ivey back. Thank God we don't have to deal with Detroit tomorrow. We, we still have Bagley out. We have Bojan out. We have Livers out. We have Isaiah Stewart out. We have Diallo out. Alec Burks out. So, um, starting lineup. Killian Hayes, Jaden Ivey, Riley McGruder, Eugene Amorier, James Wiseman, I think would be it. Um, so, with the Ivey back, that could, that just kind of, like, hurts everyone else. Um, also, you have the pricing uh, price up as well so it's not a good matchup either so I, I don't really like ivy at 7k i think that's a bit much um and then also that hurts killian hayes a lot um he'll do a bit less of the ball handling um so killian hayes Jaden ivy more of just tournament gpp plays for me don't like the matchup at all for wiseman um him Duran. they're kind of splitting these center minutes right now um, I think Duran's easier to get to, given the price tags, so I prefer Duran to Wiseman, but once again, both don't really stand out to me. Assuming Eugene starts, he might be my favorite play on Detroit if he starts. Got injured last game to bail out the faders, but if he starts, I would think he'd play around 30 minutes. You know, he's not a phenomenal point per minute guy, but, um, you know, someone that can do a little bit of everything, you know. Solid rebounder, okay scorer, can do a little bit of everything, so he seems like a safe value play. If he starts, um, Roddy Magruder is overpriced, um, but he'll play a ton of minutes. He's a guy that needs the minutes to get there. Um, 5K seems priced about right, though. Kojo, same kind of thing. He'll play, you know, with Ivy back, I would think low to mid-20s minutes. 4-9 seems a bit much for him as well. RJ Hampton I don't like, especially with Ivy back. I'm not going to play Roden, Boham, um, so... Yeah, um, not much on Detroit, unfortunately. Thank God, actually, not unfortunately. Thank fucking God we are done with Detroit slates. Move on to OKC. So it's a tough matchup here, but I still like SGA. I just think he's a 10 to 10.5K player. I don't care about the matchup. He's matchup proof. Um, definitely tough, though, but he's playing full minutes right now. He's stuffing the stat sheet. He's being super, super aggressive. So I still like SGA quite a bit at sub 10K. Josh Giddy's been playing phenomenal of late. Even with SGA back in this offense, you know, the peripheral stats are there. Has triple-double upside. Um, more of a secondary play for me, but I have no issue if you want to keep riding this hot streak with Josh Giddy. Jalen Williams had a big game with SGA back as well. Definitely a bit of an outlier. He shot the ball extremely, extremely well and got the double-double bonus. My issue with him is he's not going to handle the ball at all with SGA in this offense. When SGA was out, he was handling the ball a lot more, as you can see here. He almost had a triple-double here, five assists here, four assists here seven assists here so with sga in this offense he loses a ton of ball handling so um i think seven one is a bit overpriced for Jalen Lou dort no isaiah joe you guys know the drill by now he'll play like low 20s minutes fine value if you want to go to like the bigs like Jalen williams minutes all over the place but not a lot of value i wouldn't hate you for it um playable like not as Someone I'm going to go out of my way to play. But I am okay with Jalen Williams if you want to land on him as a last man in. And I think that will do it for OKC. Let's move on to Toronto. So, good matchup here. Pace up spot as well. Um, I think the obviously my favorite is going to be Fred Van Fleet. He's just been on another level of late, except for when I play him here against the Lakers. But, um, you know, when he gets aggressive, he gets aggressive. He's playing huge minutes. We know nurse runs a very very tight rotation so no issue if you want to go to fred i think that's fine to solid siakam has just been with purtle on this team he has taken a huge huge hit but one we still know siakam has like 50 to 60 fantasy point upside in him we know that we know that so um still do have interest in siakam kind of like him as like a buy low candidate but um very very tough to click on him with um purtle in this offense but um, no one's going to play him tomorrow. It's a good spot. OKC is terrible against bigger players. So um, kind of like Siakam is a GPP by low candidate there. Scotty Barnes, OG. These guys are more secondary plays for me. Um, don't really stand out. I think Scotty's a bit overpriced now, but pretty safe play. Like 
solid cash game play. OG, kind of the same thing. OG, definitely the lower floor between the two, but no standouts there. Yaka Pirtle, it's a really good spot for him. Um, 7-2 does seem priced about right, but maybe that'll keep the ownership a bit in check for him as well. Phenomenal match against OKC. Um, I think he is a solid tournament play. And then Gary Trent, um, it depends on how he's playing. Like, some games he'll shoot well, he'll get extended, he'll play big minutes. Some games he'll shoot poorly, and he'll get benched. So, it, it's really up to you on how you think Gary Trent is going to do. And this is why I like playing guys like this um, on small slates like this, because... If Gary Trent's going to be shooting 0 of 9, it doesn't matter if he gets benched or not. He's already going to be killing you anyway. Like, he's already going to kill your lineup if he's going to have a bad shooting day anyway. So him getting benched, it doesn't hurt you. You're, you're not going to cash if he's having a very bad shooting day. So when he gets these games where he's shooting, like, you know, this well, and he gets extended and he plays over 30 minutes, he has slate-breaking upside at this price. So I'm always interested in Gary Trent on small slates with not a lot of value. So if you want, like, if he's going to be low owned tomorrow, I think he's pretty sneaky. And like, like I said, I explained it. If he's having a bad shooting day, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if he gets benched. He's already killing you regardless. So, um, yeah, um, definitely interested in Gary Trent for value with not a ton of value on the slate. Chris Boucher, you know, he'll play like low teens minutes. He's playable, but um, just a large field tournament dart there, but hopefully I identified that because um, I feel like people are like, oh, this guy played poorly. He got benched um, with like sh completely scoring reliant players. If they got benched, they're already killing you. It doesn't really matter. This is by far my fa favorite game to target. By far my favorite game to target. Brooklyn's been getting killed by bigs. I think Savonis is a very, very good play at 10-1. His peripheral stats are just absolutely insane. He's playing huge minutes. The two-man game with him and Fox is just absolutely incredible to watch. So, I love Sabonis here at 10-1. I think Fox is still a solid play, even at 8-9. Like I said, they're going to play huge, huge minutes. I think Sabonis is the better play, but I don't mind Fox even at 8-9. You guys know what I'm already going to say with the wings. Um, one's going to have a good game. One's going to get benched. One's going to play mediocre. Let's, let's do the game and see who it is tonight. Okay, Kevin Herter went for 28. Harrison Barnes had the mediocre game. Let's see how Keegan did. Okay, so so they all did mediocre. That's that's a change. That's that's a step in the right direction, I guess. Um, but here's the thing. I think Harrison Barnes is the safest of the wings. Um, seems like his minutes are the most secure of the three. I think Kevin Herter has the highest ceiling of the three, but his minutes are more in question of the three. And I think Keegan Murray has the lowest floor of the three, but the cheapest price and um, probably the least to kill you at this price if you were to get benched. So I think right now I like Barnes the most just because I feel like he's the one least likely to kill you. I think Keegan is a fine value and I think Herter is just like an upside play, but um, they're all in play on a short slate with not a lot of value. We do have Trey Lyles back, so I wouldn't play Kessler Edwards. Um, Trey Lyles, I think, is a solid value on this slate. I think we get low 20s minutes from him. He's a good point per minute guy. Once again, not a lot of value on the slate, so I do like Trey Lyles for value tomorrow. And then let's move on. To, oh, forgot to go over Monk. Um, I'm always interested in guys like Monk on small slates as well at 4,500. You saw the big game from him tonight. He'll probably play, you know, like I said, he can struggle and he'll get benched. If he plays well, they'll extend him. He'll play mid 20s minutes and he has slate breaking upside. So I always like Monk as well on limited slates with not a lot of value. So um, getting the value right, the bench value pieces on short slates like this with not a lot of value is going to be key. And I think um, we're doing a pretty good job of identifying it right now, um, I will say. But we could have value opening up in this Pacers game, but we'll see. So, pace up spot here with the Brooklyn Nets, and I like all these guys. You guys know I've been very, very high on the Brooklyn Nets of late. I think Bridges has a very, very high ceiling in this matchup. Not going to do a ton of the peripheral stats, but they're running such a tight rotation right now. They're basically running a seven-man rotation, and that's unheard of in the NBA regular season. So, I like all of them. I like Bridges a lot. I think Dinwiddie's safer between the two and a similar ceiling. He looks great to me. I really like Dinwiddie. I think Bridges is good. Nick Claxton at 6'6". 
I think he's a solid play, not scared of Sabonis defensively either. Uh, Cam Johnson, as long as he can stay out of foul trouble or the locker room, I think looks like a very, very safe play at 6.3K. Uh, I'm not going to get to Royce or Dorian Finney-Smith. Like, they're playable. They seem like safe plays, but they're definitely a bit overpriced. And, yeah, I, I just really like these main four guys for Brooklyn. And then this is just hard to say right now. So, I do think they will be playing. I, I believe they all went through practice. So, Halbert went through practice. Um... I believe Turner did. I'm not entirely sure. I know Heal did. Uh, pretty sure Heal did. I expect them to play. We have Mathurin out. We have TJ McConnell questionable as well. Thankfully, I don't have to play this fucking shitter ever again now that he's out. Thank fucking God. Thank God. Hopefully he's okay, though. I, I heard the injury was bad. So if everyone's in, in a tough matchup, like Halberton's always playable, you know, Super, super high floor. The new point guard. The run playing big minutes. Um, actually, guards have been doing a lot better than I think people want to realize against Milwaukee. So, if Halliburton plays and there's no limit, definitely, definitely have some interest. I think Turner's priced appropriately. And then with, with everyone healthy, like, he would be priced about right. Nemhard would be overpriced. The bigs would be out of play. Um, Naismith would be overpriced. Jordan Noir would be overpriced. They would all just be out of play for me. It would mainly just be Turner and Halliburton for me. Um, and then Heald, who has a ceiling. Um, just be the top three guys. If they're all out again then, then we have some value, like mid-range play. I still think Nemhar would be a solid play at 6K. Um, I do. I think Jackson, um, Jill and Smith, these guys will uh, split these center minutes. I still think would, both would be um, solid plays at their respective prices. Would prefer Jackson. Um, Naismith would be playable. I don't love the price, though. And then with Duarte out, I wonder who they would start. Um, it would be what? Nemhard, Nemhard, Naismith, Isaiah Jackson, or they could do George Hill, Nemhard, Jordan Wara, Naismith, Isaiah Jackson, or Nemhard, Naismith, Jackson, Nawara. Who would be that fifth starter? I'm not entirely sure. Just keep an eye on that, but... Um, Nawara always a guy that has a ceiling as well. I think he would have to play a lot more, especially with Dorte out. I would like him quite a bit for value. Um, if everyone's out, would really like Nawara actually for value. Um, and then we'll just monitor the starting lineup. Um, so hopefully I broke that down as best as I could. But if I had to guess, I think they do play. So only risk here is blowout. I mean, if you think this game stays close, I think Giannis looks phenomenal at 12K. I do prefer him to Jokic. Both definitely do a blow risk. I, th I think the Pacers, if they're in, could do a better job of keep keeping it close. But, yeah, um, I don't see how the Pacers stop Giannis tomorrow. I, I love him if you think this game stays close. I think Drew Middleton, they're priced appropriately. With Brooke Lopez questionable, if he's out, we might get Bobby Portis in the starting line. If he starts, I think he's a pretty solid play at 6'5". We have Grayson Allen out, so I think Pat Connaughton will start. Solid value. I know they started Javon Carter, I believe, last game. If Javon Carter starts... He's playable, but his usage with Giannis available and in this lineup is just really, really bad. And another spot that I identified in Discord was um, on the night slate. Everyone went to Javon Carter, and I told everyone, no, I'd much rather play Joe Ingles because he'll have the ball in a sense more in that second unit and he'll have a lot more usage. That worked out huge on, on the night slate. Um, so if Pat Connaughton starts, I like him. If Javon Carter starts, playable. Not too much interest. I'd much rather just play Joe Ingles. I think regardless, Joe Ingles plays mid-20s minutes. I think he's a solid value play at 4.2K. And then uh, I don't think I'll be going to anyone else on Milwaukee. Let's go to this last game now. Orlando at Phoenix. All right, let's do it. So tough spot here. I think Pinchero is just a fine tournament only play. You know, the ceiling's there, but has a very, very low floor. Wonder Car Jr. minutes, not amazing right now. Tough spot against Aiton. Don't have too much interest. Like, I'd much rather play Nick Claxton, same price, than Wanda Carter Jr. Marco Fultz, I think, is priced about right. Uh, Franz, a bit overpriced for my liking. If Gary Harris is out, you'll probably get Jalen Suggs in the starting lineup. I think he would be a solid play. And then you might get more run for guys like Cole Anthony. Um, playable at 5 forward, but priced about right. So, really not much here on Orlando that stands out to me, uh, personally. And let's move on to Phoenix. So, 
Um, okay spot here for Phoenix. I, I, I think Booker, Paul, Aiton all look good in their uh, respective ways and their pricing. I think Aiton is probably my least favorite. I think Booker probably my favorite given price. Um, Chris Paul is just not shooting the ball like at all, but he'll stop the stat sheet. Um, Booker, definitely the highest ceiling between all of them. So if I had to rank them, it would be Booker, Paul, Aiton. I think all three are solid. Um, Okoji at 5-1 seems like a very, very safe play at um, this price. Guy that can stuff the stat sheet, do a little bit of everything. So, yeah, like Okoji at that price tag. Um, Tory Craig, probable, I believe. Yeah, um, reasonable value. You know, probably gets you 15 to 20 fantasy points, which is fine on the slate. Um, Terrence Ross, man, I'd much rather play campaign who played the backup point. Probably plays high teens minutes. I think he's perfectly reasonable for value at this price tag. Um, I do. So I think that'll do it for the slate. Hopefully you guys didn't run as awful as I did. And hopefully uh, hopefully I have a good day with no uh, run bad tomorrow. So I'll talk to you all tomorrow.